press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students, welcome back to your social science class. We, are, we were dealing with the chapter social movements. So somewhere on the verge of finishing the chapter, we have discussed about uh, the environmental uh, movements. We discussed a little about women's movement. And today we will move on to alcohol prohibition movement and then go into uh, farmers and labor's movement as well. Now, I had told you uh, about certain things that you have to question yourself. On, and I think you must uh, uh, have an insight on it very soon. Things that have been uh, occurring always may occur in the future or may not. But what we have to do is prepare ourselves for everything that comes our way. Now, certain things, you see, um, if we have to discuss today's alcohol prohibition movement, people have been drinking. Now, there is a difference in social drinking and drinking uh, like a drunkard, okay? That is drinking continuously without limits. Social drinking is acceptable. See, you cannot, uh, if somebody is drinking and it's their culture, you cannot have your views on it. Because, see, certain places are very cold and they have to drink or their culture says so. So we cannot be questioning their culture because in our culture it may be considered uh, not a good sign to drink. In a certain religion it may not be considered a good sign to drink. But another religion uh, may have its views on drinking. So we cannot question anybody on doing it. But uh, if it's your culture or if it's for uh, uh, to keep them warm or whatever. Cultural differences are there so we cannot be biased on Okay, thinking we do only this much and we are not accepting anything uh, about, uh, outside our limits. So that is called narrow-mindedness. We should be open-minded, let them do, you don't do, that's it. If you don't want, you don't do. If they want to have a drink, let them have a drink. But certain times it goes above the limits of how much they drink. And to stop these kind of things, to uh, bring into limits, certain movements were started to make people aware of, of the effects that uh, drinking had on their health. Now drinking is uh, um, injurious to health as well as smoking. How does it affect? It affects so many organs of your body and then you'll have a different kind of a view that happens in your body. But people don't understand, seem to understand. So people had to come, another set of learned people had to come together in order to do what? In order to bring these kind of uh, people together and make them aware, make them ab about, uh, understand them, make them understand about certain things that affect them. I had given you an example of when I had uh, gone to a certain place in degree. If you remember that example, it's very difficult to see those people getting away with uh, they have, see there are withdrawal symptoms, okay, withdrawal symptoms are there when you uh, help somebody uh, go away from smoking or drinking or anything, there are withdrawal symptoms that are there and it is a pity to see all those people, but somehow you must stop them, isn't it, somehow you must uh, give them a little pain in order to uh, get away with that, they get a lot of pain into it uh, because they are it is just going, it's withdrawing from them. So these withdrawal symptoms are there. All right, let's not get into more into all these medicine and other things. We'll discuss about uh, what's happening in the society. Now, a lot of women have been contributing because maybe they were victims to their husbands beating them after coming and drinking in the house or drinking outside and then coming to the house. Uh, children were suffering out of it. So women emphasized on these kind of things that uh, alcohol prohibition movement has to happen. And this movement has been very different uh, for a lot of women and they all have come together in this unity of a struggle or one union of struggle in order to stop many people getting into uh, uh, alcohol or drinking continuously without any limits. Then, uh, this was also once a part of the freedom struggle and uh, Gandhiji proposed the total prohibition concept during this uh, freedom struggle. When the freedom struggle was going on, Gandhiji proposed that there should be a prohibition on alcohol, complete stop or complete ban on the alcohol, uh, what is that, alcohol consumption. 
then. Uh, now this also became the part of the Chipko movements and other movements that happened in the coastal Karnataka. Everything was uh, uh, connected to each other. Now Kusuma Saraba and others who have also fought for this have lost their lives in fighting for people like this. Women have protested against the sale of liquor in Hasin, Kolar, Mandya, Chamraj Nagar. Okay? Now this consumption of alcohol at a very uh, greater rate causes a lot of problems at your personal level, also at the community level. Now let's take the personal level and understand. If it's a couple staying together, maybe a husband, a wife and two children, or another scenario where uh, two boys in the house and two girls, siblings maybe, whatever, husband or siblings or whoever they are, okay? Imagine the man of the family comes and drinks at home regularly, or goes out, drinks and comes back and then has no limits to his mouth, no limits to his hands, nothing, no limit to the form of violence that he creates in the house. At a personal level, your relationship with uh, that person as a sibling or as a husband or as a brother or whatever is just spoiled in its own way. Why is it spoiled? Because, see, that kind of a connection you can't have. You cannot have unity in the house when all this is happening. It creates a number of problems, maybe stealing of money, uh, maybe uh, not contributing in the uh, income or not contributing in the expenses of the uh, family. So this is an additional expense for the family. That is, uh, that man drinking in the house is an additional expense for the family. Now, how much of additional expense can they bear? They will not stop drinking, but they will continuously go on and drinking and drinking. See certain things. Now, if you plan for the week, you can say, okay, two days of vegetable, one day of chicken, one day of fish or whatever. Again, vegetables back. But drinking is on all days. So the expense is high there. Expense is high at a personal level. Relationships spoil. Children suffer if they have children. And maybe death also in the family. And then the wife and children have to suffer along with the other family members. In raising the children, in contributing, think the wife is not working, only uh, this is an earning man, but still he is consuming a lot of alcohol and not contributing. The family is maybe dying of hunger also. So at a personal level, at a community level, you see people uh, drinking and falling down on the roads. There nobody to look after them. They are not even bothered about their lives. They just uh, lie down on the streets. They are on the footpath. They are in the bus stands. Anywhere and everywhere, they, you, uh, at least you must have seen some people who have drunk and then uh, slept over like that. But on the other hand, there are also people who uh, drink and then walk on their roads. They don't have no balance with their body, but walk and then disturb the others. Maybe go to a shop and then disturb them, disturb the shopkeeper. Go to the bus stop, disturb some people there. So at a larger level also, disturbance is there. There is no kind of uh, uh, satisfaction with people who do this crossing their limits. Okay, then uh, that's what I mentioned to you. See, severe problems in the rural areas because of this. Maybe if there is, that's the only man who is earning in the family, then the others will suffer. By chance, if the others are working, then well and good, no need to bother about. But still, a relationship as such, a brother, uh, whoever in the family has a relationship with that man, whatever kind of relationship, is all disturbed because of one single person in the house. Now, uh, people who are uh, working as uh, small scale laborers also, okay, maybe daily wage laborers, just think they get 500 rupees, uh, 500 rupees uh, per day, and if they spend at least 200 or 250 rupees in drinking, what, how much are they going to give home? Even if they give home, what will you get out of 250 rupees? Okay, you may get a very less meal. Uh, children, that is why maybe it can lead them into malnutrition also. Lack of food. Now, if he gets 500 and if he spends the whole 500 the day, it's only daily wage laborers get on a daily basis, isn't it? Now, some days they may not have work. So that means you have to save this money for that day. But that day, it's zero, nothing and that day they suffer, okay? So at, uh, different kinds of uh, problems can happen. Uh, the, maybe the wife who earns the money is again stolen away from her or taken away, abuse and violence, so she's into a lot of trouble with it. So women thought we cannot st uh, stop or we cannot keep quiet on certain issues, but we have to come together and uh, 
make some kind of protest or bring these men on track okay so okay see you have been given an activity but you can't be doing it now uh, anyway if by chance uh, you can do it somewhere in the coming years when you have some cultural programs or something like that because this year uh, when you go to college okay you can do this activity that is there in your text page number 67 all right so that was alcohol prohibition movement now we'll move on to the farmers movement now these farmers our farmers are still suffering in uh, our land our farmers are not being given certain things that they would like to have we are we want them otherwise how will you eat food you want the farmers but you don't want to protect them why is that kind of an attitude or why is that kind of a, a um, bad vision regarding them i'm not getting the right word but it's at least not respecting them for what they are doing uh, in their own way why do we only think of jobs that have a highly which highly pay you or a huge sum of money why don't you farmers do earn if we respect them properly and if we give them the particular needs they still can earn the money but they they grow their crops according to their seasons and rates are always down when it comes to uh, sell we cannot be cheating them like that isn't it we can give them a certain amount of policies we can help them uh, through different kind of implementations that are done okay moving on to this farmers movement began because of uh, uh, issues related to tax okay began with the denial of land tax uh, land tax was denied to be paid and that is why the farmers movement uh, began now if you remember your history lessons that we learned we have learned about uh, these britishers laying taxes isn't it the landlords had to pay and they could take anything any amount of money from the uh, people who came to work there with them so what was happening a, a form of looting and cheating them the rest was in the landlord's pocket only what sum was to be paid to the britishers and the government used to go to them the rest in their landlord's pocket and who was suffering the poor person who was working or the poor farmer who was working there in the fields was suffering the landlord was just enjoying uh, in his own way sit back straight and enjoy you say right so he was sitting back straight and enjoying whatever was coming in his way but let other people struggle for him now this denial of land tax also emphasized on bringing these uh, farmers movement together now you know these in the 21st century they all came together to express their problems they faced in uh, different issues such as uh, uh, taxes not getting certain payments okay their crops not being uh, sold properly so a lot of problems they came to discuss in this 21st uh, century in the 1980s uh, farmers movement was also very important at that time and people have been struggling now agriculture is our main occupation it's the backbone of the country we say so many phrases and sentences but do we really mean them how many farmers are struggling there we see now we cannot blame the rains uh, we have to sometimes blame ourselves for the weather conditions like that we cannot be blaming anybody we cannot be saying see if it's just pouring uh, somewhere in uh, january february we can't be blaming but we have to blame ourselves for changing the weather conditions like that for cutting down forests for not getting enough rain also we must blame us ourselves and people around should blame themselves and not anybody else because see because of the cycle that we have disrupted everything in the nature is happening accordingly to accordingly how we have disturbed it it is not it was peaceful it is on its own we are disturbed it now if you go near a snake and if you disturb it it will sure to bite you even the dog for that matter if you simply walking on the road and you are walking simply on the road the dog is not going to do anything unless sometimes it barks sometimes these dogs are very quiet they are on their own you are on their own unless you go and disturb them it will disturb you same thing what we have done with nature we have disturbed the nature then this nature is intent disturbing us that's it what we must understand is we must be careful with our moves we must be uh, uh, 
aware of what is happening right and what is happening wrong. So same thing happened with the uh, farmers. Now in the 1970s when uh, uh, Devraja URS was uh, the chief minister of Karnataka and he brought in a lot of social reformations that were there. He tried to bring legal measures to uh, uplift the or take these people who were discriminated based on caste, okay, they were, they were looked at very low caste or uh, low, lower uh, sections of the society. So they, they were put in a frame, isn't it, that you are belonging to these low caste. He wanted to bring a certain kind of reformation or transformation in the society and wanted to uplift these people who were discriminated on the basis of their caste. Now, he also wanted to free farmers who were uh, belonging to this tenancy system, okay, and bonded labor. That is, certain amount, certain period of time you're going to work with me and then you will be given somewhere else, okay. So, these tenants were acting, middlemen who were acting and bonded labor that was acting, that was happening. They wanted to get rid of these kind of system for the farmers as well. Okay. Now, these farmers used to pay a lot of money to each other, used to take things and they used to l result in debt, okay. Now D-E-B-T, B is silent there, debt, okay, debt. So they used to go into a lot of debt and they could not uh, pay that money anywhere. Now they were, he uh, and other ministers likewise wanted to release these farmers from a lot of debt they were incurring. And because they could not pay, sometimes you see these tenants used to come and uh, charge a lot of money which the farmers themselves could not pay and that resulted in debt. Maybe they could not uh, give that money somewhere else, again they resulted in debt. So a lot of debt was accumulating towards them and they could not fulfill. And as farmers are committing suicide, for what? Because of uh, the unusual rains, they cannot grow their crops, on the other side they are also in debt. So how can we save our farmers? We'll have to save them. If we have to live, if we have to eat, we have to, uh, we'll have to serve, uh, save them somehow. Okay. Now, uh, he also wanted to take the practice of carrying night soil on head and other things. Okay, not, uh, what is that, uh, not burdening the farmers as such, not giving them a lot of work and making them feel physically too tired. Then, a lot of protests by the farmers and other people likewise who were uh, uh, in company of these farmers came together because, see, they wanted to uh, let the government know what were their needs. They wanted to let the government know properly what is expected out of them, what is to be done by the government. So they wanted the attention of the government for uh, different kinds of problems that were faced by the farmers. Now, now initially the government took it as a very uh, political movement and uh, they were all beaten up. They didn't want to listen to what's happening. That's what's our problem. We don't want to listen. We don't want to uh, bring together learned people. We don't want to bring together researchers. We don't want to bring together people who are deeply involved, who are speaking the truth. We don't want it. We always want somebody else who will just waver away, butter you. That's what's happening here in our country, isn't it? How it's going on? Everything is going on through political issues. Are we really thinking? You, you may have heard of a lot of news that's going on now. Um, people have been put into jail. People are not given a certain things. When they were asked, uh, when they asked for something, they're not given. But people who have spoken the truth are behind bars. People who are lies have been got, uh, have got bail. So certain things, so many things, we have to just question ourselves that's why it's happening. Now here also, the government wanted to uh, somehow solve this problem of this uh, farmers movement so that it's they thought it's a, a politically um, politically charged movement politically motivated movement so they brought in the police they ordered firing they gave a lati charge so all this was happening in 1980 the uh, farmers of naragund they revolted against the government's attempts to uh, use force or police force and other things against the farmers now that is not right isn't it uh, without knowing, 
the matter thoroughly, you cannot just beat them up and say it's a politically motivated movement. Now, now this farmers' revolt of Naragund was not only a protest of uh, police getting involved and other things, but it led to a very different and other. Uh, uh, it led this farmers' movement into a, another stage or a different stage, which was very high than what had happened before. Now. This Naragun uh, revolt was led by uh, the leader, Professor M. D. Okay. Nanjunda Swami. Okay, if I'm not mistakenly uh, pronounced it wrong. Nanjunda Swami. Yes, Nanjunda Swami. Professor M. D. Nanjunda Swami. He was a socialist. Uh, he founded Karnataka State Riot Sangha. Okay, Karnataka State Riot Sangha. Now, this organization, this Sangha that was there, came into existence with the presidentship of Rudrappa, a Gandhian from Shimoga. So, Professor M. D. was named as the convener after that, and N. D. Sundaresh was named as the secretary of the organization. So, now this is see too old to uh, remember their names, but uh, just read and understand. That's it. Okay. Now, in this organization, now next, what is there? That's very important. What happened? Uh, why did they start? You know, because there was a lot of uh, difficulty the farmers were uh, put into. But they had these organ the, this organization had laid down uh, certain conditions to be uh, looked onto. First is unscientific price fixation. Now, prices were. Uh, too high that were fixed and farmers found it very difficult in the beginning. Now farmers were in a lot of stress, okay, and the government, uh, uh, they, they also mentioned to the government that they should stop the, uh, stop taking, the, taking away the lands from the farmers, okay, Sh seizure, seizure of the properties from the farmers uh, for their debts. Now it was like this, see farmers were, farmers were in debt. And when they could not pay those debts, their lands were taken away. So they fought against and said, even if the farmer is in debt, you shouldn't take their properties because, um, see, that's what they have. If you take away the properties, they have nothing to make for their living. All right? Now, villages that don't have infrastructure should be developed into infrastructure, should have, and they should immediately develop all these. Then. Uh, villages should also get amount, a certain amount or certain percentage of the resources that are extracted from these villages. Then, levy system, okay, levy system should be stopped, tax system should also be looked after, and then other many demands were placed on these people. Now, see, uh, uh, if we have uh, looked on to many incidents that are happening. Our farmers are dying, our farmers are losing themselves, our farmers are uh, worried about things, they are worried about drought that's happening, not heavy rainfall, they are, some, some places are getting very scanty rainfall. Okay, farmers uh, are been having a difficult time, farmers have been having a difficult time, but how can we help them solve these kind of problems? How can we make their lives better? With see certain policies, we may have said we give you loans, we'll give you, uh, we'll give you a certain amount of money, we'll give you uh, pesticides or seeds for free. You have a seed bank, okay? Like a blood bank, you have a seed bank, so you can buy seeds from that at a very uh, cheaper rate. All these initiatives initiatives are done. But after that, uh, certain things are needed. See, you need water there. You'll have to create um, channels there for, uh, or canals there for the water. There should be a channel to, a, a water for, a water channel to move. Okay, canals are different from channels. So don't get confused. Things, see, you need water, you need manure, you need pesticides and insecticides. If it's not that good, but still, people use it for their protection otherwise. So a lot of things that are happening. Now even today farmers movements are going on. Now uh, 
Kaveri River water sharing was going on in the court and this, see, this, uh, these incidents that have been uh, placed in your textbook have been placed which is long back ago because the textbook uh, formation was happened, happened long back ago. So you must uh, understand that when they have written it, it was, uh, near, uh, it was not so far from uh, those years for them. But today as we are reading it, um, it's a little far away from us, but yet we must know uh, those incidents that happened. All right. Uh, now you can think about or uh, write an essay on how farmers are suffering or how do we save our farmers. All these things can be written down and you can make your own points. If you get a chance to uh, write any article anywhere in a newspaper or uh, your school magazine or anywhere, make a chance and write on cer certain topics that you study. So you have information in your textbook, pick those information, acknowledge the textbook uh, for taking the information from here, write your own words and that's how you improve in your uh, thinking as well as writing. Okay, we'll stop at the students, uh, we'll go to labor movement and uh, untouchability prevention movement and the prohibition of untouchability movement in the uh, next class. Thank you very much for listening.